today what I would like to do is I'd like to show you how to finish up your firm slab project once it's leather hard. If you remember, at the end of the last video, I took a plastic strip and I placed it around the edge of the form. I would do that typically for one night only to allow the air to get to the interior so the form can get leather hard. You know that it's leather hard when it still is slightly flexible. You don't run the damage of cracking it by uh, bending it slightly, but yet it is very firm and it holds its shape. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to peel off the tar paper. I want to show you how to clean up these edges. As you begin peeling up the tar paper, if you see that the wall is flexing and moving on you, stop and let it dry for another night. In my case, it was leather hard. It is nicely um, uh, leather hard. It's going to support itself without any problem. What I want to do now is I want to look at the corners. I want to try to make sure that my corners have met nicely, that they don't have any wavy bumps or, or edges, maybe right here, that sort of thing. And my favorite tool for cleaning would be, I would start off with a sure form, and then I would move on to rib or a scraper. The difference between a rib and a scraper is that the scrapers are made of metal. They're designed to scrape away the clay rather than just ribbing it. What I'm going to start off by doing here is I'm going to take a sure form and I'm going to run it along the corners and I'm going to try to remove any bumps or irregularities that I might have at the corners. I'm going to do this on the bottom as well as all the sides. Now all of this sure forming scrap I would end up by placing into the slip bucket because I don't want to necessarily get all this dry scrap into the pug mill or it might leave dry chunks everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up all these edges. Just try to tidy and straighten them. Then once I do that, I'll come back and show you what to do after that. All right, I have now taken a sure form and I've cleaned up my corners. One place that I still need to clean a little bit would be the bottom part. Now using this sure form does not really work in here because I can't quite get down to the curve. Instead, I'm gonna use a sure form that is bent uh, side to side rather than end to end. And for this, I just kind of keep the sure form moving slightly diagonal, diagonally as I do this. And it will help to just make that a much cleaner. If I don't get every bump removed on the bottom, I'm not, I'm not terribly worried about it. But that certainly helps to eliminate some of the bumps that I might have there. Okay. Once it's sure formed, then I usually like to take a yellow rib when it's in the leather hard state. And the yellow rib will just kind of scrape and uh, smooth out those sure form marks. When you're doing the corners, you want to really try to make sure that you're keeping those corners crisp and not rounding them. If you are having any difficulty, let's say you're scraping away and you cannot get that quite clean enough, you could take a sponge and add just a little bit of water and that will help you rib it a little bit more. You want to be careful not to add too much water because first of all you can make the clay flex in a place that you don't intend for it to flex. And also you don't really want to wipe it too much with water because if you end up by wiping it you will end up by having a lot of rough grog that is showing. So I'm going to take just a few minutes and clean up all these corners and then I'll show you the next step. Sometimes you might find that a scraper makes a little bit faster work of ribbing if you're having particular difficulty getting rid of any bumps 
what I'm doing here is actually kind of scraping away the clay more so than just ribbing and compressing it. Now that I've scraped it, now I can come back in here and rib it. And I will continue again with this and show you when I'm done. Okay, you can see now that I've pretty much cleaned up my seams on the outside. It really doesn't take that long, just a couple minutes of ribbing. Now I want to work on the interior and the top edge. Now, for the interior, I do want to smooth out the rest of these. For this, you can use, again, a rib or a scraper. I am just going to move to the little one so I can get right down in here and scrape a little bit of this extra clay off where it's kind of built up. Now that I have scraped away some of the chunky areas on the interior with a scraper, now I am just going over it with a rib again, just to smooth it the last little bit. I clean my rib off quite frequently because I don't want to transfer that clay to another area, so I just try to keep my rib clean. Now I want you to notice, I am holding my hand on the outside, so as I rib, I'm not going to crush it or change the shape. It helps to add a little bit more support. And if you take a red rib over it at the very end, a red rib does help to really smooth and compress the particles. Okay, now I've smoothed much of the inside, I've smoothed much of the outside, now I want to go ahead and address the top corners. We talked before how important it is to make sure that these top corners are blended. Once they are blended, I do want to make sure that my edges are even. I'm going to just sure form anything that might be sticking up. Now, the same method that I have recommended to you all in the past to get your edges even, I'm going to recommend now. I would get down, put my eyes level with the form, make sure that I'm looking across it and determine which parts might be higher, and I would sure form those parts down. It's a little easier sometimes to figure out where you need to sure form if you get your eyes level with it. And it's also a little easier if you don't do it on top of the foam. But Okay. Now I have the edges of my pot even. They are level, in other words. What I want to do now is I want to figure out exactly what kind of a contour I want for my uh, final edge. Do I want it rounded? Do I want it flat? You can use a vegetable peeler, of course. Say if I wanted to round it, I could do something like this. Okay, I could do that with the sure form as well. Let's say if I want to take down a little bit on those corners there, if they're a little bit sharper than I intend them to be. Or the other thing that I like to use sometimes would be a notched card. Over in the rib drawer, I do keep some notched cards, like old ID badges, and what I'm going to do is only if this is leather hard really does it work, I'm going to take that notch and I just drag it along and it's basically sculpting the edge to have the contour of that notch now. There we go. Now because I can't get the notch around these corners, I do need to go in here a little bit and do a little hand sculpting right there. I've now rounded my edges. I like the uniformity of the uh, edge. And now what I'm ready to do is I'm ready to put my incising or applique on. Remember when you do applique, you need to score and slip on the clay and it should be leather hard. For incising, it is much easier to work on the clay when it's leather hard. If it gets a little drier, it becomes more brittle. The closer to bone dry it is, the uh, more brittle it would become. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to use this because I want a nice horizontal line. I'm going to line it up pretty much with the edge right here. And I'm going to mark it. Now this is when a piece of foam is really important. If you are tilting it and you are on the table and you're not on the foam, you could end up with some issues of getting uh, your corners rounded and it could become kind of a mess for you. Alright, now I have my line lightly drawn on there. Now I'm ready to actually do some carving of my line. I want to remove a little bit more of the clay. For that, I'm going to still use my ruler so I can get a nice straight edge. You don't have to, but it's going to make it go a little faster, and I'm going to use the triangle tool. I really do like this one for removing some clay. Instead of just pushing it to the side, it actually will be removing this clay. And I've got a nice line now. This is something that doesn't require a lot of painting, but if you do find that you have burrs, you definitely want to clean that off and then recarve. When the clay is um, in a leather hard state though, it cleans up pretty nicely. It doesn't leave a lot of burrs behind. If you use a needle tool or another tool which is just pushing away the clay, you have a lot more cleaning left to do. Okay, I have now carved my line that I want. I could carve any elaborate design that I may want, but I wanted to go ahead and show you how I could utilize um, a texture on here. A lot of people are often intrigued by this texture. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a loop tool, a round loop tool, and I'm going to make some divots, and I'm going to do the texture underneath the carved so line. So I am just using the loop tool to make a nice little random pattern. You have to be very aware of how thick your clay is because, of course, you don't want to carve right through your wall. Again, I am holding my hand on the inside of the pot just for a little added security to make sure that I'm not going to break the pot or flex the wall accidentally. So I'll go ahead and continue with this, and then I'll show you at the end. All right. I've now finished my uh, texture with the loop tool. You might notice as well that I did do the texture on the bottom. It's sometimes a, just a really nice addition to have that little surprise when you turn the piece over. Now, when you are done, what you want to do is you want to allow this to dry slowly. The worst thing that could happen is that you leave it uncovered right now, the top dries out faster than the base, and then it'll crack at the corners. So, what you want to do is you want to take a bag, and at this point, you want to do what I call a bag hatch. I want to put it over the edges, just like that. I want it to allow to dry slowly. Uh, you can now put it in the drying cabinet as long as it is bag hatted. Uh, remember that it's just imperative that you don't see any seams visible at all. If you see a seam down in there at a corner or down uh, along the along the side that is going to be a very easy place for it to crack. So it needs to be nicely blended, bag hat, and then allow to dry and get leather hard. Uh, we will of course fire these in the bisque kiln before we glaze them. And uh, that is how you finish cleaning your slab pot. <coughs>